There. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? It is time for Ask Dotto Tech episode 11, the show where you ask me questions and I answer them to the best of my ability. We are going to be talking today. What are we going to be talking about? We've got Google Photos questions today. We've got Evernote questions. We've got uh, we've got Gmail questions. We have Facebook questions. We've got lots of questions. I got lots of answers. So join me today on Ask Dotto Tech. For those of you who are new to this particular show, if you have any questions that you want to ask me, I encourage you to just post them in the comments area here in YouTube. I read the comments area each and every day and I answer as many questions as I can, either there in the comments or the questions that I think have more universal appeal, I will answer here in this weekly show called Ask Dotto Tech. So we're going to start things off with Rick Holbrook who said, uh, oh, ba oh, this was uh, in reference to last show where I was showing how you can demark uh, in an email, forward an email into Evernote, but actually assign tags in which notebook it's going into by using the hashtag or the pound sign for the notebook name and the at symbol for the tag. No, no the at symbol for the notebook name and the pound sign for the tags, to apply tags. He says, this is fine for emails I compose, if he's creating it himself. However, I can't get it to work when I want to simply forward an email that I've received to Evernote. For example, when I receive an email payment receipt, I'd like to forward it into Evernote and direct to the proper notebook. The problem seems that I can't edit or add to forwarded email subject line. This is a common problem, so I can't add the name of the notebook. And the, it ends up just in the in the uh, inbox, basically in Evernote, uh, and he uses Gmail. So let us have a look. I love this question because this is something which we had to puzzle through. I had to puzzle through at one point myself. So let's say that I want to take this little test message here and I want to forward it into Evernote, just as I showed you in the last episode. What you do is when you go forward, that creates a, a new, basically a new, a new uh, a text entry area. But if you click here in the little drop down box right above, right within the within the address menu, uh, address menu, you can edit the subject. This is the key. You just go edit subject, then it will pop open the email and allow you to actually go in and you'll actually be able, be able to change the topic so you can forward it to your Evernote account and then you can add all of that at information for the notebook name and you can end up adding the hashtag for the tag so that you can tag it in. So you can take the, the you can take any forwarded email, such as the receipts that you receive, and you can forward them in to a specific notebook with a specific tag structure within Evernote. Does that answer your question? I think it does, Rick, and thanks so much for asking it. Murray Atherton, who says, Steve, I use Facebook a lot, especially when I'm traveling. I post a selection of photos from my phone, but unfortunately they all seem to end up in an old file, an old photo file called More Hawaii 2013. I've got photos from the UK, France, all here, and I don't want them there. How can I develop a separate photo files folder and move the pics from one to the other? Well, I think the first thing that you need to do, moving them from one file to the other is a small problem. The big problem is you've got poor Facebook posting technique, my friend. Here's the problem that you have. I've got my smartphone here and I am going to go into my camera roll and I'm going to grab this photograph. I was at a speaking engagement the other night. I want to save this photograph. I want to take this photograph and I want to share it to Facebook. It's this uploading process to Facebook that's causing your problem because at one point you uploaded a photo into that album and then you, because your preferences in your phone have remained pointing to that particular album. So when I go to upload this photo now, I choose upload, I choose Facebook. There's, if you look here along the very bottom, just beneath the image, do you see the little sign that it has kind of a picture with the lines underneath it? That is my album selection. So here you can choose which of your albums, which of your photo albums you want to upload your photos to within Facebook. Does this make sense? This is the genesis of the issue. You can go into Facebook and you can move the photos from album to album just in the Facebook browser. That's not going to be a problem for you to clean that up. Your problem is making sure that your photos don't end up all in Hawaii 2013 for the next 15 years or so. So Murray, I hope that we've answered your question and solved your issue. 
Next up, oh, you know, I put this one in because I just wanted to make a mention. I have been getting an increasing number of people posting in the channel saying sub for sub. This is the term that that uh, different content creators put on Facebook or sorry, on uh, on YouTube to say, if you subscribe to my channel, I'll subscribe to your channel. So allow me to editorialize for a moment and ask to Autotech and say, no, I don't do that and neither should you. You want people subscribing to your channel who are interested in your content. And I'm sorry, Koto Yamja official YouTube channel, I'm not really interested in your content. It might be great and if I discover it on my own and decide that it's something that I want to watch, I'll subscribe. Or you can ask me to take a look and, and give you some feedback and if I like it, I might subscribe to it. But I will not subscribe for a subscription because I want my community to be people who want to follow me. Enough said. Sorry, dude. Next up, we've got M. Becklenberg who asks, You've shown us how to use the Evernote Web Clipper, but I don't understand why it's better or as good as simply bookmarking a site, which seems supremely easier than clipping to Evernote. Thanks for your tremendous effort on our behalf. And Mike is in, I think it's Mike, or M. Becklenberg is in Chicago. Well, Chicago M. Black Becklenberg, here is the story. Just clipping a bookmark might seem on the surface to be easier because it's a one-step process. But the challenge with bookmarks is how do you ever find the bookmark that you're looking for again? So if we're sitting here, if I'm reading a great blog post by, by Ped, Peg Fit, Fitzpatrick here and I say, wow, this is really good information. I want to research this and use this. I want to save it and I want to use it again. If I bookmark this post, where am I going to save it? Am I going to have that many folders and that much structure in my bookmarks area to have, first of all, have a place to put this. Secondly, how am I ever going to find it again? If I'm in uh, and I'm saying, I need some information on Twitter. I was reading an article about Twitter. How do I find and how do I remember this post, which was about Twitter? I'm not going to be able to. That's the simple fact is we're going to forget it. But if I clip this into Evernote, I can do a search in Evernote for Twitter and this article will come up. That's number one. That's the first and best reason for using the Evernote Web Clipper in this way. And it doesn't take that much more time than it does to bookmark. I go here and I click add bookmark and yes, that's done. I still have to determine where it goes. But as far as using the Evernote Web Clipper, if, if I'm doing it quickly, I just go save this article and save it and it's saved into Evernote that quickly. It doesn't take me that much longer and now I can search for it anytime I want to find it in Evernote. So that's number one is the search capabilities. But secondly, what happens if the author of the page that you're visiting changes the content in the page? It might be something that they've decided they've either they're, they've gone out of business, they've moved their website, they've changed the URLs of their website. Often you'll find if you go through your bookmarks, you can find lots of dead links in your bookmarks because the page, the source page has changed. If if I clip the content into Evernote, I'm going to have that content regardless of if the source material changes. Plus, in Evernote, I've got a reference link back to that original uh, URL post. So if there's updated information, I can still get to that if I need to. So I think in every way, except for maybe a few seconds more per clip, using the Evernote Web Clipper for information that I'm going to want to go back to on a regular basis is vastly superior to bookmarking. Now, where it's not superior to bookmarking is not where you have these kind of the quick bookmarks that I leave in my menu bar, things like a link to your bank account or to web pages and sites that you go to on a daily or super regular basis where it's a software as a service site, where it's something that you're using the services. In that particular case, yes, bookmarking is more efficient than clipping it into Evernote. So for things that you're going to be returning to constantly, always going back to, go ahead and bookmark it and make sure that you have a few enough bookmarks that you can remember what they are and you know what they represent. Because don't forget that the URL changes too, and some or URL sometimes is very cryptic. So it's not always self-evident what that URL is. But if it's a research-based clipping, if it's something that you're looking for for future reference or to the, because you're doing research on an article or you're doing research on a topic, then without fail, using Evernote is going to be a vastly superior way to clip and to retain that information. So I hope that that helped you, Mr. Becklenberg. So now we have Victor Mora who said, who said, started to watch our videos today, didn't get through all of them because as he says, there's a lot. There's one thing I wish to know. How do you manage all app notifications? Ah, notifications can become the bane of your existence if you don't have them in control. One point that bothers me is for the same tasks on my phone to launch several alerts. It's annoying. Do you have a tip? Okay, let's talk quickly about alerts because alerts appear in both our browser or our computer, our desktop computer and on our smartphone. And let's start with alerts on your phone. 
there's a sa similar place, at least in the Apple world, to manage alerts in both iOS and OS X or OS, uh, uh, OS 10. And the place that we go is into the settings and you choose the notifications tab. When you go into the notifications, this is a list of all of the apps on my phone that if they had their way, would give me notifications on a fairly regular basis. This is an area I have to take ownership. So if you see a notification come through on your phone and you go, I don't care about that. Why is that thing notifying me? Go in here and turn off the notification. The New York subway system, when I'm not there, I don't need the notification. Now, fortunately, they haven't been sending me notifications, but if they had, I could turn it off right here. Uh, for what else? Paris Periscope. Often, you know, you get in, a, you get in that little whistle tweet that of uh, all of your friends having periscopes. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. This gives you control. Now, similarly, on your desktop computer, if we go into our settings here, our system settings here, and we open it up, we also have a notifications tool here. And again, these are all the apps that are running on my computer that want to give me notifications. And this is even more sophisticated because we can turn on and off do not disturbs for them and we can actually click on them and we can actually decide what type of notification is okay from them and which ones we're gonna allow and whether or not we want them. Additionally here and on your iOS device actually, you've got a summary of all of your notifications here. Uh, it, it, we just pop out in the far upper right hand side of the of, of your computer and on the desktop sorry on your on your um, on your smartphone if you swipe down from the very top you've got all of your notifications available here and these are the notifications that you've decided to give permission to uh, in this case iOS or your or OS X in order to run so I allow notifications of emails coming in of uh, of my slack communications that sort of stuff so some notifications entirely appropriate other ones we just don't want just don't want those notifications. Ask Auto Tech is brought to you by the generosity of our friends at Blockless. What is Blockless, you are asking me? Well, let me tell you. Blockless is a service that allows you to freely browse the internet without regional restrictions. If you're in Canada and you want to watch US Netflix, Blockless has your back. If you're in the States and you want to watch UK soccer and it's not available in your region but it is available in the UK, Blocklist is your tool to allow you to avoid those regional restrictions. If you want to know more, I encourage you to drop by our website at dototech.com slash blocklist and learn what DNS switching and true regional freedom looks like. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.